Well, it's great to see so many of you here, standing room only. And uh, our guest in this session really doesn't need any introduction. Peter Fincham is, of course, a rock god. You may have seen his band here at this <laughs> festival. Other festivals throughout the summer. Um, but uh, he's uh, not on keyboards today. And uh, the reason he's here, of course, is in his spare time, uh, Peter runs a very successful uh, television channel. He's been director of ITV since 2008, commissioning some of the most influential television of the past five years, from Downton Abbey to Exposure, the documentary about uh, Jimmy Savile. Before joining ITV, he was controller of BBC One, and before that, uh, ran Talkback Thames, where he was responsible for Knowing Me, Knowing You with Alan Partridge, Never Mind the Buzzcocks, and uh, The Ali D Show, just to name a few. Now, you're going to get a chance uh, towards the end of the session to ask him some questions, so do have a think about them. But you can also tweet questions too, and I'll be putting them to, to Peter during the session, and the hashtag is TV Controllers. Now, I thought it'd be good to start with the McTaggart lecture, still fresh, I'm sure, in all of our minds. Were you woken up buoyed by his assertion that uh, television is in its third golden age? Yeah, I, I thought it was really good, the, uh, the lecture. And um, I, I, kind of, I sort of like optimistic McTaggarts. Um, I prefer people to strike that note than to sort of say we're all doomed or technology is going to sweep us in, you know, kind of into the oceans or, or whatever. And I thought he was fundamentally, it was a very positive, pro-creative McTaggart. I thought there's issues in there about the way we watch television. And, you know, obviously he's made this, this very innovative series for Netflix. And we know that's changing the landscape. But, but when you come to the fundamental, which is the, the appetite of audiences for storytelling and bold storytelling... Um, I thought he was absolutely you know, saying the right thing by saying that's as strong as ever and what audiences are demanding uh, of us all is to raise our game, be more innovative, more challenging, great. That's, that's good. So, yeah, I thought it was really good. But when he says give the creatives total abandon, I mean, is that really possible at ITV? Well, um, I, no, I think it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a really good point. And uh, I think if you're making a speech like that, the, the TV executives are rarely the good guys in speeches like that. <laughs> the suits, um, yeah. And, and yeah. the notion of the, 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 the kind of creatives over here with their kind of wild and wacky ideas and the, 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 the conservative uh, executives over there is, is, a, is a bit of a, a, a stereotype anyway. Um, uh, I, I think, but I think there is a serious underlying point there, which is that when broadcasters work with talent, trust talent and give them, you know, a, a loose rein, if you like, that's when the real rewards come. Um, and I've never, I've never been very keen on the word control in controller. Um, just, I've done quite a lot of controller sessions now, both at the BBC and ITV. Um, uh, and, and, and the very idea of it, of, of controller, always makes me smile in a way, because I, I think it's kind of enabler more than controller. Um, and and if, if, if whatever your channel was, if it was over-controlled, it won't be healthy. It needs to be something slightly more alive than that implies. Well, let's have a look back at some of the programmes that you've enabled over the past year. Reasons. All these young people skittering about like mice, <laughs> desperate to get back onto the internet. <laughs> Don't just watch the adverts! <laughs> You're gonna have to face the charges on Ant and Dex Saturday Night Takeaway, Jack. <laughs> I've never jumped off anything that high. Looking good, isn't it? The winner of the X Factor 2012 is James! <laughs> See the knob. Would you be a darling and pull my finger? Oh, 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 you've just got funny bones. It's a very serious medical condition, actually. Attraction! 
I ain't gonna candy coat it. I deserve to be executed. You can't just leave someone in a room expecting to change overnight. Welcome to hell. In 1930s Germany, anyone who didn't fit the Nazis' idea of perfection was exterminated. Do us a favor, blow a laugh for me. Mr. Pickles, we're gonna go straight through the window if you're not careful. That's politics. You, you have to deal with short-term problems, but try to focus on the big, long-term stuff. Your son has been found. And he doesn't want to see me. Now, for the first time, we explore the other side of Jimmy Savile. We are going to show the world how to make shopping thrilling. Go and bring the world to Selfridges. I'm a good detective and a poor policeman. No one can teach you the first. You'll be calling me mum one day. Yeah, you're going to have to pass your sergeant's exams first, though, eh? Oh, you're so funny, Janet. Yep. <laughs> He's making a pattern. If we can crack it, we can stop him before he kills again. He was 11! Explode! Dead. Isn't he? I'm so sorry. It's okay to be a Life is strange, isn't it? But it will never be the same. We don't always get our just desserts. The world will be watching. We're going to look at um, some of those areas in a bit of detail later on, but looking more generally, ITV's rebranded itself. Do you think it's also redefined itself? Well, I, I hope we're on, on the road in that direction. I think the rebranding thing was really important, and, and uh, you, you know, we rebranded all the channels and everything around the identity of ITV all on one day, which is a very ambitious thing to do, and I thought really brilliantly carried out by... Um, the, the, the guys in, in our marketing creative departments. Um, and I think that was an important thing to say, we want a modern look. I think the previous branding of ITV had looked a little bit uh, dated, but it's all, you know, it's all part and parcel of a kind of endless process of creative renewal and, and, and you know, believing that ITV can, can and should continue to raise its game, wants to be defined by what's on screen, by our programmes, by the talent that we work with um, and creativity, rather than just be defined, if you like, as a commercial business. And, you know, sitting where I'm sitting, that's a project, and I think we've made some real progress in it, but I never sort of think that's done. I think there's lots more progress to be made. And has that creative renewal brought the audiences with it? I mean, the bar figures talk about viewers being down 5% in the previous 12 months, share down 1%. Um, our, our viewing this year's up. Our viewing uh, this year's up across the family. Yeah, so we may be talking about slightly different figures, but, but ITV, and you know, I'm sort of slightly here in two capacities because I'm responsible for all the channels, but we are, by a significant margin, the best performing channel family this year. And uh, after 2012, which was a... Um, a challenging year, not least because of the Olympics and the Paralympics and, you know, those big national events that weren't on ITV. Um, 2013 so far has been the best year that we've had in the, in the time. Yeah, we can have tedious arguments. I think, course, I think these course. are from mid-2012 to, to, to okay. Nazi's okay. figures. So that yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And, and I suppose, the, and then Ofcom looking at the previous five years would say there's a de decline there as well. Well, no, 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 hang on. There's, a, there's an adjustment, if you like, between the, the old, what we used to call the terrestrial channels and the digital channels that, you know, continues even though digital switchover is, 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 is complete. Um, and people's viewing habits are still developing in all sorts of ways, not just in terms of the difference between mainstream channels and digital, but also uh, catch-up TV, video on demand, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. The, you know, the world is changing in that sense, but the, the proper way that we look at it is to say, uh, how is ITV in the broadest sense doing in, in, in those terms? Across all the channels. Uh, absolutely, yeah. and without a doubt, we're the best-performing channel family um, this year. I mean, to be honest, you, you know, to go back to where we were before, I, I'd, I'd rather not define it in those terms anyway. I think that, you, you know, I, I'm not denying ratings are important. Um, uh, and it would be a very odd thing for a director of television to ITV to say, I don't care about ratings. But if you go, if you go back to Kevin Spacey 
last night, and, and what, what, one of the things he was observing, although I don't think he kind of drew this to six, was, he was observing what a lot of incredibly innovative drama there is in America. And of course, most of that is on cable. It's not a network. Well, here we don't have the same network cable distinction because essentially in terms of drama, um, only the equivalent of the network, so able to commission drama, can afford to commission drama. So I think that that brings to us a pressure, if you like, to say, innovate, innovate in these areas in the way that you know, some of the cable stations have innovated uh, in America, and you, you will take your audience with you. But if you're, if you're too slavish about ratings, and in, if you're, you know, and again, I've sort of got the slightly um, uh, the privileged position of having run both BBC One and ITV, so I've seen it from both sides, if you, if you simply try to live in an old-fashioned world, almost like the sort of Cold War, a world of American and Soviets, where all you're doing is try to sort of, you know, beat each other every Thursday night or Wednesday night, careful with that, because you might not create um, a landscape, or you might create an environment in which you really can raise standards and innovate. Well, there was one drama which was certainly seen as an innovation for ITV, and we're going to show a little clip of it now. This area is off limits no, as of now. Please. What? Oh, God. I know him. He lives here. Now, calm down, DS Miller. You don't understand. I know that boy. Shut it off. Be that, professional. You're off. working a case now. God, who's that? No, Beth, what get off it? the beach. Beth, what have you, you can't be scary. Let me see. Let you me can't see. be oh, here. Come on, let me see. Come on. Come on. Get off the beach. Oh, Lily. Oh, Lily. Very moving, very striking drama. Did it feel like unusual, in a sense, to have this on ITV? Do you think it could have been seen on ITV in the past? I did, well, I, 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 I wouldn't say it couldn't have been seen on ITV in the past. I think it, I hope it was a good example of trust the talent. You know, Chris Chibnall had this vision. Um, uh, he's now, of course, the hottest writer around, but, but at the time, you know, eight hours, one crime... Uh, um, a very discursive piece in a way, not a piece that was going to deliver, in, you, you know, this kind of result to the audience at the end of every hour. Um, brought to us by Kudos, though, brilliant, brilliant company we, we love working with. Um, uh, it's, it's, it's one of those examples in drama that, I, you know, I wish they had more often, where where at every stage, I think the right decisions were made. When I mean that, it's, it's cast perfectly, it's beautifully directed, the score is brilliant, it's got a fantastic sense of pace, of place rather, of storytelling uh, uh, and so on. That is, that's sort of what we all dream of. And we, of course, we were tremendously proud of it. I think before it went out, we thought it was very good, but you never know. You never, you're never sure. We didn't know that it would kind of grip the nation. I think a, a decision was taken, a, a very good decision, to uh, not put in, at the end of every episode one of those next time little things. Yeah, they're so annoying. But that's a very it's... bold decision because they're yeah. so, well, they're, they're annoying, but they're there to kind of, you know, to tempt an audience mm. and to tease an audience. And so if, I think in a way Broadchurch was very against modern trends and, and, if you like, House of Cards, Netflix, binging on something, it reminded us of the pleasure of deferred pleasure that yeah. we had to, to wait, wait till Monday yeah. night. Yeah, yeah. It became a talking point because we waited till Monday night and I think there's a pleasure in that as well. And I believe, you know, if we look into the future, um, I'm an absolute believer in, in box sets and binge viewings and, 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 and watching television in the way that you want to. I, I do it myself. But I'm also a very strong believer in the value of a linear schedule and, and, if you like, almost the social value because this is what Everybody's makes it... Everybody's watching at the same absolutely. time. Yeah, this is what yeah. makes it the water cooler television and that's what mainstream television is there to do. But isn't one of its strengths, which you've identified, was its cohesiveness, this small community shocked by, by one crime? You're bringing it back, though, and it wasn't intended, was it? It was intended as a one-off. Isn't that quite risky that you'll end up with a kind of, you know, midsummer murders by the sea? Well, I, 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 I take your point, but I, but I don't think we will, and, and um, I, I, I don't think you'll find when you see Broadchurch 2 that it is in any way a formulaic repeat of, of Broadchurch 1. 
Um, but that's for, you, you know, Chris Chimmel and, 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 and Kudos and, you know, our drama commissioners to, to, to work on together. Um, uh, I, I think it's an exciting challenge to, to come back to Broadchurch and you know, we'll see. What kind of other drama are you interested in looking at at the moment? The strengths seem to be in police drama or costume drama. What about um, other things that might be more contemporary? Well, it's, I, you know, it's, I, th I always think it's very dangerous to, to generalise about what you're looking for because, you know, it's a bit of an old cliche, you don't know what you're looking for and you want to be surprised. I think you can, you can gauge trends. I think since... Downton Abbey and maybe BBC One's Call the Midwife, there's been quite a, a boom of, of costume drama, period drama. Um, and we did a bit of an analysis of this and worked out that the sort of balance of period and contemporary has sort of flipped on its head. Um, so probably that means we need more contemporary drama because, but, but that doesn't rule out period drama. We've got quite a lot of period drama kind of in the pipeline. I think that in mainstream television, there is always crime drama. There's always, I mean, let's not forget Broadchurch is a crime drama and in, in, in the sense of it starts with a, a murder and ends with the solution of it. That's actually ultimately utterly conventional. Um, so you know, I think pe people always have a, uh, a, a strong taste for, for, for crime drama of one sort or other. Um, but that's not the only taste they have by any means. So the success of Mr. Selfridge at the beginning of the year, um, obviously of uh, Downton Abbey, next month Doc Martin is back. We would always love more that is, that is more unlikely, if you like. It's harder to find. It's harder to find. Do people not bring... Do people have a tendency still to go to the BBC first, do you I think? think I think... I don't know if they have a tendency to, 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 to go to the BBC first. That's kind of rather difficult for us to gauge. Um, um, but I think that in all of television, there's a tendency, um, uh, and we're guilty of it as well, to, to, if you like, come up with things that we think, well, you know, that's what, that's the sort of thing that ITV drama is or ITV factual is. It seems to work, so let's do more of it. And I think generally, we should try to challenge ourselves not to do that as much. And, and I think that the... The, the, the change in television, as we've got more choice and therefore we're more choosy about what we'll watch, inevitably leads us to saying, if you come up with formulaic television, we may not watch it. Um, yeah. so, so, but, 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 you know, this doesn't and only rest with writers and producers, it rests with all of us to try to keep challenging ourselves. And I think, I mean, I think there was a survey commissioned by yourselves which found that some indies thought that ITV yeah. was risk-averse when it came to commissioning. Yeah, and I think, I mean, the, the, I think that was a, a, a salutary note. I think that a mainstream channel probably doesn't set out its stall by saying we're looking for quirky left-field ideas. So that may, you know, that may reflect itself... Mm -hmm. In that, there was a lot of very good stuff in that survey, by the way. That was the one bad thing. Um, but uh, um, I think it's a perfectly fair challenge to us and to, to, to the commissioning team. But, you know, I think we've been having a good, we've been having a good year. I think the ITV's in, in good shape. That's the time to, be, to challenge yourself more. So, yeah, I'd like to. Now, of course, the channel is defined by drama, but also, to a very large extent, it's defined by entertainment. And this was uh, one programme which was certainly... Marmite for uh, critics and viewers. Pain, can't you from here? Now, somebody said to me that you know, splash is people in speedos jumping badly. Were you surprised by its success? Um, I, I don't know. I must have watching that again. I just take my hat off to Omid Jalili. I stood on that 10 meter board, it's absolutely terrifying. And, and uh, um, just to do it is yeah, wow, wow. He didn't need to go up to the 10 meter board. Um, well, I splash when it. When it came out, at the beginning of January, it got what we call a mixed critical reception. Um, <laughs> OK, yeah, I, in fact, I'm going to read you one of the mixed oh, critics. Oh, don't, Kev, don't, Kev, don't. It's so good. Kevin O'Sullivan in the mirror said, Splash is water torture, the worst programme yeah. ever. Those cackling, clipboard-carrying teletypes uh, will say, it's so bad, it's good. Wrong, it's just bad. Yes, yes. <laughs> Well, I don't know. There's a perverse side in me that when, when I read something like that, I sort of get behind something and think, <laughs> we're going to prove you wrong. And, and actually, 
to be fair to him, the first episode was a little bit unsure of itself, and I thought this was a really good example. It was made by 2-4, and we kind of had a meeting in the... It was live, so we are following it, and they made quite a number of changes and really did some good work on kind of you know, shaping it up and putting it together. Then I thought it got much more confident. But one of the reasons I'm you know, really happy to talk about Splash, which we're doing, um, which we're obviously bringing back in January, is that you know, this is one of ITV's jobs, to come up with Saturday Night, Saturday Night Entertainment. It won't necessarily be uh, kind of the stuff that's going to get you know, the critics um, salivating, and, and we understand that. But I think it's such an important part of, of our output. It's the slightly more in-your-face entertainment, other shows like Take Me Out with Paddy McGuinness or... Uh, whatever, a you know, hugely successful return of uh, Anton Deck's Saturday Night Takeaway this year. Um, as any of us who work in, in, in this area know, the hardest thing of all, harder, to be honest, than finding drama, because so you know, there's a lot of good drama out there, um, we'd always like more, is to find new entertainment formats that will work in the mainstream space. Mm -hmm. And Splash is that. And as that clip shows and the reaction of this audience to that shows, it's, it's straightforward. You know, you've got a celebrity on a high diving board. There's jeopardy, there's fear. They're in a swimsuit and they've got to do it. And you've got Tom Daly, by the way, which is a... <laughs> Always uh, helps. Uh, yeah. Always helps. <laughs> um, so the element, I think the elements of Splash make for charming entertainment show. I hope that the Kevin O'Sullivan's of it will be kinder to it second time round. Uh, but it's, it, with re due respect to Kevin, it's sort of not for him. It's for the audience, and they were with it from the start, and they stuck with it for the start. Got big audience. So what about some of the kind of older brands? Um, Dancing on Ice is, you know, is, is not long for this world, is it? What, what are you looking for to fill that gap? Well, you, that, that's, in a sense, exactly the point. You're looking for big bold ideas that have mainstream appeal. I think that we've lived through uh, and are still living through, in a sense, a golden age for entertainment where you know, the huge brands like The X Factor and Britain's Got Talent um, uh, are you, you know, absolutely central to our schedule. How long, are, how long is their shelf life? I think, think? I, I think that I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to put a, 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 an age on it. Um, I think they'll be around for a long time to come. Um, uh, I think it's a very dangerous thing to assume that, if you like, a, a big entertainment show goes like that and then goes like that. I mean, if you take, for instance, I'm a Celebrity, Get Me Out of Here, which goes back to 2000. Uh, I think it, it was 7% up last year on the year before um, and has been growing for two or three years. Well, so, you, you know, that, it, that, that's, that's a fantastic thing. It comes around every November. People absolutely love it. Um, Britain's Got Talent's been in exceptionally good health, um, particularly since, you know, I think David Walliams joined it a couple of years ago. I, I, I'm not in any way calling time on the existing big entertainment formats. I think the big challenge, not just for ITV, but for all mainstream broadcasters the world over, you know, talk to any American network, they'll say this to you and, 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 and all the other... Uh, territories is is finding the big new entertainment formats of the future, um, uh, which is why when something like a splash comes along, you, you, you're really delighted. <laughs> but I mean, what taking? I mean, notice the shows that you mentioned. You didn't go into detail about X Factor, but do you think Simon Cowell needs to come back to that program to reinvigorate a long-running brand? No, no, I wouldn't put it that way. Um, I mean, we, we you know we're delighted that Simon's in Britain's Got Talent and. Um, you, you know, X Factor, Simon does X Factor in America. Um, and, you, you know, this is something that's been the case for a couple of years now. And we, we are understanding completely, um, completely realistic about. Um, I You'd don't like to have him back, presumably, wouldn't you? Well, look, look if, if, he, if, he, if he did come back to X Factor, that would be great. But X Factor, um, you know, is an enormous brand, an enormous programme, with or without Simon. Um, uh, Sharon Osbourne's back in it this autumn, and we're absolutely <coughs> delighted about that. Um, I think that these really juggernauts, they will fluctuate. They'll, some years ago, up and down, up and down a bit. I mean, Strictly Come Dancing bounced back a couple of years ago after about three years in which it was going down and people were saying, oh, is Strictly Come Dancing over? Now nobody says that. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's fair to say that when the, these formats all kind of date to quite a narrow period at the beginning of the last decade and nobody could have predicted that they would have had the life that they have but I think they've still got a lot of life in them but I think that the corollary of that is that it's become a difficult period to launch big new entertainment programs and 
you, you, you know, take Big Brother, which has now found a, a sort of secondary life on Five. Um, uh, you, you, you know, uh, that, that's not an ITV thing. I'm sure broadcasters the world over would like a new Big Brother. I don't see any sign of a new Big Brother. They're really, really hard to, to, to come by. Well, I suppose an example of that is uh, one of Simon Cowell's other programmes, uh, Food, Glorious Food, which really didn't do so well, and we can see some of that now. Welcome to Food, Glorious Food, the show that scours the land for a humble home-cooked recipe that the whole country could fall in love with. This week, we're in Malvern. On the one side, we have the lush Welsh valleys, and on the other, the brooding black country. England versus Wales. Let the battle commence. Did you regret commissioning that one? No, no, no. Um, I think that the, the, we're in an area there that is not, or hasn't in recent years, been an ITV area. Um, uh, and it's an area, I mean, you know, we just had the relaunch this week of the, the Bake Off to huge, huge audiences. And it's an area where the difference between something that kind of strikes a nerve with the audience um, and, and something that doesn't, doesn't quite kind of do that is a very narrow one. And Food Glorious Food was a very well-made, very well-produced show. Uh, it was a co-pro with Psycho and Optimum. So great pedigree, people working on it. And I, I guess, you know, if we're being completely honest with ourselves, maybe those elements didn't quite come together in a way that created a kind of originality that, that, that you know, struck that chord with the audience. And, but you because know, it was but, looking to be like Bake Off, was that part of the problem, do you think? Well, I wouldn't necessarily say it was looking to be like Bake Off. I mean, you, you know, there's, there's, there's quite a number of kind of food-based entertainment shows around, and they, they'll all have some elements in, in, in common. Um, but that, you know, that's the nature of commissioning. Um, and... And it's also very much the nature of ITV because we don't, you know, you can't open a show out of town on ITV. It has to be right there in the peak time schedule. Um, and, you know, the audience, it got about two and a half million. It, you know, in a first series on BBC Two or Channel Four, you'd be pretty pleased with that. Right? When you're looking across the schedule, do you look at the number of returning shows, do you think about that kind of balance? Yeah, I think, I think inevitably, and I'm sure all channel controllers do, I think, and, and again, all, all you're trying to do is to, is to reflect the tastes and demands of audiences, and as viewers, we want a mixture of the familiar and the mixture of the new and the, and, and the challenging. Um, uh, so, you, you know, in ITV, we have two absolutely essential staples of our schedule, which are Coronation Street and Emmerdale, which both had extremely good year. Um, uh, and so you, you, you will always have in any week on ITV, uh, you know, quite a lot of the familiar, if you like. So therefore, you want to keep bringing the changes elsewhere and making sure that you've got enough variety in schedules. You know, British schedules, compared with, say, American schedules, where, you know, you'll know an autumn season long in advance, it'll be rock solid and very predictable, and there's only a few hours of commission programmes anyway. Mm. You know, and again, this reflects the demands of audiences. British schedules have a lot of new things. We all launch a lot of new things every season. You know, that's, that's good news, and that's one of the reasons why British production companies have been such great exporters of intellectual property. It, it reflects the culture of British television, which is, you know, people are saying, come on, what's new? And, and we're, we're always doing new things. Good. Good. It would be if our schedule silted up, that would be a very bad thing. And you've got great successes of returning shows, catchphrase, pretty good figures over five million mm -hmm. viewers, and that's been recommissioned, hasn't it? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. We thought it'd be interesting to find out which shows you would like to see revived, so do tweet us, and uh, remember the, the hashtag that we find it is TV controllers, so let us know which ones you'd like to be brought back. I'd like to turn now and, and look at factual programmes. Do you feel that you're in a good place with Factual now? You've got um, Long Lost Family and um, Paul O'Grady's for the Love of Dogs. Programs which um, I think we've got that. some really good stuff. And uh, Long Lost Family, we adore. Um, Paul O'Grady's Love of Dogs uh, has been, you know, the, I mean, the, the, what, you, the opposite ends of the spectrum in a sense and both absolutely lovely shows. Um, and there's also been some really high quality Factual this year, such as uh, Trevor MacDonald in, on Death Row, uh, Aylesbury, the prison series, and, and, and many others. Um, uh, I think with Factual, well, um, Richard Klein has joined us as, as director of Factual, um, which I'm you know, absolutely delighted about. 
is in the room, so I would say that. Um, uh, but I am absolutely delighted. I work well, with I'll Richard. be careful what I say as well. No, but it's I work, I work with Richard when it? I was at the BBC, and uh, when I was running BBC One, and he was, he was doing factual programmes then. And I think that's great, because also it kind of implies a new chapter in factual, and, and I'm sure he'll bring some new perspectives. And in a sense, what I'm saying to Richard is, is challenge us. And, you know, some of our... Uh, I think some of our best quality factual is, is, is really good. You know, sometimes we're slightly within our comfort zone, if you like. You know, get us out of our comfort zone. and let's, let's do some things that... Um, this is one of the things, I, I think I've said this before, that's really lovely about ITV, is that you can surprise people with a certain sort of programme. People say, oh, I'm surprised that was on ITV. Well, great, let's keep surprising people. So I think that, you, you, you know, we should aim to do that, and we should aim to find areas... That, that, but again, you, you've got to find areas that appeal to broad audiences. Mm. We can't go niche on ITV, or not in, not in peak time anyway. Um, but I think, you, you know, and I hope Richard feels this, we start from a, not a bad place at all, but, yeah, we can do, we can do some, some more interesting things and, and want to. What Joe Clinton Davis has talked about is the shock of the familiar. Yes, yes, indeed, yes, yes. And, and, and I think uh, I know exactly what she means by that, which is that there's a certain sort of thing you do on mainstream television where and you sit as a viewer and think, oh, we've been in this area before, but haven't been in it for quite a while. There's something fresh to say about it or fresh in the way that it's done and how it's done. I mean, many, many prison series before Aylesbury or, um, or, 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 or Trevor MacDonald, but you're working with, you know, wild pictures or plum, you know, really quality... Uh, uh, suppliers who, who then come with a fresh take and make the familiar feel new. Absolutely, I think that's one of the things that we do kind of in mainstream television. Well, look, there was one programme which was certainly very shocking and really, I think, sort of transformed the landscape of British television over the past year, and that was, of course, the documentary Exposure. The streets of Leeds were packed with mourners who wanted to pay their respects to a national institution. The gold-coloured coffin was typical of the showman and entertainer who, during his life, helped raise an estimated £40 million for good causes. But we've discovered evidence of another Jimmy Savile, a man who mourners at his funeral would find almost impossible to recognise. Was it a very difficult decision to decide to commission that, such a controversial programme? Um, eventually, no, um, but it was taken over a period of time. Um, it was almost exactly a year ago now. When I say it was taken over a period of a time, well, actually, we, let me go back a bit. We, we started Exposure a couple of years ago, and I, I was very, very keen to introduce an investigative current affairs um, uh, strand into to ITV, an example of, if you like, surprising people, doing something counterintuitive. People thought ITV had backed away from that area. And I thought it was very important that, you know, I think that the journalism of ITV is as important as its drama and entertainment and that we should do something that, that had, um, you, you know, had the, had the potential to uncover really interesting stories. Then this story came to us. We, we knew that the BBC had, had, had uh, you know, looked into it but, but not gone ahead with it. Um, and I'll be honest, that gave me pause in terms of thinking, well, I wonder why not. So we, we started filming, um, um, but we, I hadn't actually commissioned that programme at that stage. And, you, you, you know, we filmed a number of interviews and, and I, I watched them all. I watched, watched them all more than once. And, so you were very closely involved then? Yeah. Uh, I, I was under no illusions this was a big call. Um, uh, and, and I'll... I was to a degree concerned that when the documentary went out, um, uh, opinion would split between those who'd said this is all true and this is the truth about Jimmy Savile and those who said this is tittle-tattle and you are speaking ill of the dead and of the recently dead. That split of opinion never happened, to be honest. So if it happened, it happened for about 24 hours before you know, everybody acknowledged that it was true. So I, I, you know, I think we knew this was a big call. And when I say I, you know, this was a... Uh, uh, with Michael Jeremy, Ian Squires, my senior colleagues, you, you know, in News and Current Affairs. And it was only when we had, you, you know, quite a number of interviews. And I can remember saying in the, in the meeting where we signed it off, listen, we'd need a reason not to do this now, because having, having put these women through the ordeal of telling their stories, it's, it's quite a thing to do to say, well, thank you very much for doing that. We're kind of you know, brush it under the carpet, as it were. Yeah. So 
so, so at the point at which we finally did commission, it was, to me, it was absolutely obvious that it was the right thing to, to do. But, but even then, you, you know, it was, a, it was a big call. And it was, a, it was you, you know, I, I, did, I mean, we didn't know it would have the repercussions that we, we, it had. We knew it was a big story to tell. If, if you said then that something called Operation Yew Tree would follow from it and all that's followed from it, I, I don't think we'd have guessed that. Um, but that's what current affairs is there to do. It's there to, 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 to tell uncomfortable stories and make an impact. It's not the only um, uh, program in, in the Exposure Strand that's done that. Banaz and Honor Killing has been you know, an award-winning, uh, less publicity about it, an award-winning film. And we will continue to do that. We've got another series of Exposure this autumn. And the broader point about ITV is that I was concerned that ITV had pulled in its kind of, it narrowed its range a bit and said we're defined by, you know, popular drama, entertainment and so on. We're not that worried about whether we cover these areas. Ofcom wasn't telling us to anymore. It wasn't that it was a quota telling us to. And I felt very strongly that, that, that in the broadest sense, it says something very important about ITV. It's got a hugely rich heritage in Granada and World in Action and so on and so forth, that we must we must you, you know, take on things that may make us uncomfortable, as well as things that are, that are delightful and entertaining. Um, so you know, I'm, I'm proud that we did it, but it was, you know, it was a big call. Huge repercussions, as you say, police investigations, but also for broadcasting, brought down the director general of the BBC. Do you think that they now have the right team to rebuild? Well, I, 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 that's, uh, I, I sort of wouldn't want to be drawn on that, Martha. And I think that, uh, I, by the way, the, 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 the exposure about Jimmy Savile was not a programme about the BBC. It was about Jimmy Savile. So it was also about um, uh, Broadmoor and you know, Leeds General Infirmary and Stoke Mandeville, right. all important stories in their own right. Um, and its repercussions you, you know, in, in all directions have been significant. But, but it's, it's not for me to comment on, on the BBC. There are, your own time at the BBC has been uh, in the news lately. <laughs> where are you going? <laughs> where where am this? I going on this? I think you know. I think you know. Yes. So the payoff. I think you know what I'm about to say. The payoff, OK. Yeah. Um, Margaret Hodge, um, uh, chairman of a, a select committee in the House of Commons, said the £500,000 was an outrageous Did waste she? of oh, licence fee payers' up? money. OK. Yeah. Well, look, I, I, it's six years since I left the BBC, and I, I haven't talked about the circumstances which are left, and I don't want to start now. And, and nor, as I was just saying, uh, I've really, really resisted turning into an armchair commentator on the BBC, um, uh, which I had a wonderful time at, and I'm fundamentally a great supporter of the BBC. So I, I've, I don't want to talk about it. And I'm here to talk I, about ITV, wherever, we've only got an hour. We're sure. 40 I, minutes I, in. I, I, um, I can understand and, that you don't uh, want to be an, uh, an armchair. People want to ask questions. I'm, I, we, 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 yes, very uh, nice try. I'm going to give it one, one, more, one more go. And because it is, it is you know, it's, the, the questions are going to continue to rumble, not just here, but outside as well. And Roly Keating, one of the other BBC people who, yeah. who got a pay off. I know where you're he, going with this. He, he, well, <laughs> he gave his money back. Have you thought about giving your money back? Look, I, 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 honestly, I, I, I don't don't want to talk about it. I, I actually have um, a confidentiality obligations, which I have observed um, <laughs> um, about this. And, and I just don't think this is the, the, the forum to do so. Um, um, and so I can't say anymore. All right. Well, I gave it a shot. <laughs> um, let's move on to comedy now. Another area which you've been there. Uh... <laughs> um, so this was one of the shows which was announced with great fanfare for the season last year. So who were you squawking at on the phone just now? If, what, my mother, if you must know. Was she calling to tell you when she'd be dying? <laughs> she was very distraught. Why, did you finally tell her about us? <laughs> I'm waiting for the right time. <laughs> Well, again, the critics weren't very kind about this one, were they? The Telegraph called it perhaps the least funny new comedy in recent memory. Well, look, um, they... That's a bit hard. Um, uh, There's one of these very strange things, actually, and I never understand this, where it got really good previews, um, and then it got, it got mixed reviews. But let me put this in context again. Um, I've, I felt... Um, 
uh, and my background's in comedy. You know, that's taught back, started in comedy. And, and I increasingly felt, this is, you know, a couple of years ago, that, that we were shying away from a challenge, which was to get back into scripted comedy. We had a wonderful show in Benidorm, which we still have and is a, is a, a hugely popular show. But I think ITV had let, let's, it sort of had kind of slightly shied away from thinking that we could make a commitment to scripted comedy. So we decided to do so. Um, we were joined by Mifan Moore as a, a commissioning editor in comedy. Um, and we set, set about developing things. And we launched here two different shows, Vicious and The Job Lot. Um, very different. One, you, you know, a, a, a big kind of in-your-face audience laughter sitcom with this wonderful cast of Ian McKellen, Derek Jacobi, and... Um, uh, Francis de la Tour um, won the job lot, much more in that kind of modern thing of the single camera, no laughter track. Um, and, and, you know, we put them out there to see, um, you know, what the world made of them. And not everybody liked Vicious, but many, many people did. And, and that critical tide, to considerable degree, turned during the run of it. But anyway, the long and the short of it is, we're going to do them both again. Both want, again, interesting. Absolutely. Okay. But we're going to do something slightly unusual, the job lot we're going to do again on ITV2. And I, the reason for that is I feel the job lot had a particularly strong appeal to a young audience. Um, uh, and I think that um, on, IT, on the main channel, I don't want to, I, I think the job lot is a lovely show um, with a wonderful cast, the brilliant Sarah Hadland in it, Russell Tovey, uh, Joe N. Wright, um, with a very sure sense of what it is. Um, I'm not sure what it is, is quite a mainstream sitcom, but I think on ITV2, it will join the other sitcom that we, we launched in the last year, which we're also recommissioning, Plebs, which I absolutely oh, yes. adore. Yeah, yeah. And I think then you, you'll have two very strong sitcoms on, on ITV2. Therefore, the job lot will come to ITV2 with an average audience of over 3 million which is a fantastic audience for ITV2 to, to, to inherit. And I think it's, it's something that's, it's, it's a fluidity between our channels that I'd like to see more of. It's a, I think it, you, you know, it's a slightly surprising one because you tend to think things going from two to one, if you like, run to one to two. So that's the job lot. And then Vicious, which I think was, was and is a very bold sitcom because it's, it's totally comfortable with what it is, which is in front of an audience, played for laughs, um, uh, with this wonderful cast, um, I, you know, written by this guy Gary Janetti, who writes for Family Guy in America. He's very passionate about it. Made by Brown Eyed Boy, or a kudos company. Um, what went uh, wrong with it then? Was no, no, no. I, no, I'm, I, I don't think I, I don't think the issue is what went wrong with it. I think the issue is of a show like that finding its feet. And if we are if we are committed to comedy. I don't want to commit the, the first and most obvious sin of broadcasters, sin's probably rather too strong a word, which is to say, I'm gonna bail out at the first, you know, sign of ratings falling off or, or whatever. If we're committed, we're committed. So we're, we're, gonna, we're gonna go again with Vicious, The Job Lot, and Plebs. And what, will you be making any kind of changes to Vicious? Will you be getting well, new writers in? Or, I mean, I'll tell you, the, the criticism I've heard a lot, actually from a lot of, of, of gay friends, is that it's, it was very stereotypical, is what they felt about it. Well, look, uh, um, I, I'm sure Vicious will evolve, and I'm sure that, that Gary Giannetti and Gary Reach from Brown Eyed Boy, who, you know, works with him on it, he, he, you know, will think, well, you know, what tweaks could we make in a second series? Um, uh, and we've discussed those with them. Um, so, yes, of course it will evolve. Um, I, I think to that issue about the, 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 the gay community, I think it was and is a bold thing on, on ITV's main channel to, to commission a sitcom in which the central relationship is a, is a gay relationship. But that's not really the point of the show. It's really about... Um, you know, people are slightly older and, and frustrated with growing old and in bickering relationships and so on. It's like any sitcom, it's about character. And I think they're, they're richly drawn, lovable characters. And I think people who, you know, watch the series came to really love those characters. And I think there's lots more to do with them. Well, before we move on to the year ahead, we've had a couple of suggestions for revivals. Let's see if you'll bite on either of these. Wheel of Fortune and Supermarket Sweep. <laughs> 
really? I think, yeah, who knows? Who knows? <laughs> never say never to anything. So. Our supermarket suite, apparently with Anton Deck. Oh, well. In Selfridges. <laughs> OK. <laughs> They're just that's making a, That's it a up. good suggestion. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's good. It's good. OK, well, uh, I don't think they are going to be part of uh, next year's uh, schedule, but let's see what is. There's a sneak preview of some interesting programmes coming up. Why am I doing this in Attic? Is this floor safe? It doesn't look safe. It is definitely safe. I, I promise. Right, rest my case. Let's do this. So, here I am in the loft, which is also very hot. I'm sweating like a sausage. I'm dwelling within a nest of suitcases, which indicates this person travels a lot with all their clothes. And indeed, friendship bliss. <laughs> I'm leaving. I didn't want to run off without saying goodnight. I suppose you think I behave very badly down there. My dear, I'm not really very interested in whether you behaved badly or well. No? No. I'm not your governess. I'm your grandmother. And the difference is? The difference is... I love you. You were classed as a baby killer. I was that, I am that. I'm a lot more than that as well, but that's who I am. I've never heard a story of somebody who's been on the run for 35 years. I've never heard anything quite like it. So you, you were given a very long Two very long sentences. Yes, I was uh, given 110 years. 110 years? Yeah. Well, I think we're going to meet three very interesting, very different uh, programs there. Let's begin with Through the Keyhole. Just from that little clip there, I, I sense this is slightly different from the Lloyd Grossman version. <laughs> Luckily, we didn't see him in his underpants. Indeed. <coughs> it's, uh, I, it's just one of those things where, because we love Keith Lemon and Celebrity Juice and Lemon Levita Loco and everything, but it's one of those things where, you, exactly that point about revivals, which is, which is I think you've just got to be completely agnostic about them. You, you, you know, you don't, you don't want all your... We've got plenty of new, um, new entertainment, completely fresh titles. If somebody comes along with an idea, and, and you know, somebody mentioned through the keyhole in Keith Lemon, I think they called it through the keyhole at that end, at that stage, but it, <laughs> it didn't end up being called that. <laughs> yeah, that one could have been unfortunate. It, I just, you, you just think that that could be a great, you know, it could, that 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 format could be like a perfectly tailored suit for his his skills. Um, and I've seen a certain amount of it. It's very funny indeed. I mean, that's just a tiny glimpse of it. So lovely, you know, f you know, light-hearted entertainment show is going to go out after the X Factor. It's going to be a great slot. Fingers crossed. So a key part now of your Saturday night schedule. Well, so it's, it's a, a new show we're launching very soon indeed. Yeah, yeah. So, but we'll, you know, nothing's for sure in this life. I really hope people like it. What I've seen, it's really funny. It's really and a new, new dance program as well. Got a new dance program called Stepping Out, which also launches very soon. We've got a show on a Wednesday night called Big Star, Little Star, which we got high hopes for. Those are both from ITV Studios. They're really, you know, really interesting new shows. What's, just describe Stepping Out to us. Stepping Out is kind of, uh, it's a dance show with celebrity husbands and wives. Um, or so sometimes the celebrity is the, the, the male partner, sometimes the female partner, and they. Um, so it's partly about relationships in a slightly Mr. and Mrs. way, and it's partly about dance. Uh, presented by Davina McCall, uh, launches very soon next weekend. People will say this is your version of Strictly getting it's into before Strictly it, starts up again. No, it's very, they, they may. It's not very like Strictly at all, actually. Um, there's no professionals involved. It's not kind of. Um, it's not got that feel at all, but yeah, of course they will, uh, or of course they may. Um, people can always compare anything to anything, but you, you know, we we're, we're, very, we're very hopeful of it. We saw the clip from Downton, obviously very moving, but again, without uh, Dan Stevens, 
you know, how confident are you that well, the program will be able to continue? The, well, well Downton, the new series in Downton was launched uh, uh, a week or two ago. Um, I was away at the time, but I saw all the, the, the press cuttings and, you, you know, the, the, the previews were fantastic. They were saying it's better than ever. It's stronger than ever. And, and, and I think it's in exceptionally strong form. And, you, you know, if you lose one character, you, it's, it's like you close one door, but you open various others. And, and that's going to you know, inform this series. And, you know, Lady Mary as a widow and suitors and so on. I don't want to give too much away, but... Um, there's loads and loads of story. I mean, this is one of the great things about Julian Fellow's writing is he has an extraordinary ability just for, for story and storytelling. And, you know, Downton is, you know, one of the things we're proudest of and I'm really confident of it coming back. Well. One theory about the success of Downton was that it, it, would, it was pure escapism at a time when we're living in an age of austerity. Yeah. As, you know, perhaps, you know, fingers crossed, but, you know, there are signs of economic recovery. Do you think that, you know, that mood will change? Will it be? Do you know, I never believe any of that for a minute. In other words, all this idea that, you know, because we're in a recession, therefore we want certain sort of programmes, but when we're in a boom, we want other sorts of programmes. Mm. There may be some truth in it, but I, I never, you know, we, we commissioned Downton Abbey in the, the sort of worst point of financial downturn, and that's, that's great, and I'm really glad that we did. But we weren't smart enough to think because we're in a recession, we will want something escapist like this. It was just a great script. It was just a great script. And we thought this, you know, this could be a brilliant thing. It's a slightly surprising thing for ITV. Um, uh, so I'm, I'm, a, I'm a bit of a heretic on this. I don't, I don't really buy sort of ideas of, you know, looking at the economic climate and, and working out, therefore, what sort of programmes people want, will want. I just think they'll want good programmes on any subject at any time if they, if they come along. Well, lots more to talk about the year ahead, but I'm aware that I did promise that um, people uh, in the audience could ask questions. So um, perhaps we could get some microphones out. Yes, there's a chap here at the front. Hi there. Um, I just want to ask, uh, you said about TV revivals, and I actually suggested to Peter this a year ago at the network, uh, Spitting Image. Would that be a show you consider bringing back? Um, it's a fantastic show, Spitting Image. Um, I think very much of its time. That doesn't mean it couldn't be of another time. Um, uh, I, we haven't had any serious discussions about bringing it back. Um, we won't, you, you'd look at it seriously if, if, if it was kind of offered to you. Um, uh, I think it, it was a very expensive show, dare I say. Um, and the, you, you know whether you would do it with the same sort of puppets today in a kind of digital age, I, ju I just don't know. So, but um, we, I can't say that we've okay, had a serious... Well, we have a bit on the X Factor. Um, there's been a lot of press release. Usually the press is very big with the X Factor. You've got... Um, there's been a lot of talk of Louis Walsh leaving this year, and then Dermot O'Leary said in an interview that Gary Barlow might be going as well. And then Sharon Osborne suggested that this would be her only year coming back. So uh, how long do you think the X Factor has in terms of a, of a brand of ITV? How long well, I've, I before? think I've already, I've already answered that. I think it's got lots of, uh, you, you know, lots of years to come, but you, you couldn't be more right. There's lots of press about the X Factor, and I would recommend that you don't believe all of it. <laughs> Let's put it that <laughs> Very way. Good, good rule generally, I'd say. <laughs> OK, there's a lady there. Hello. I'm actually the Canadian exclusive broadcaster of many of the ITV shows, including Downton Abbey, The Syndicate, Mr. Selfridge. And uh, I've been looking at Breathless, and I'm wondering what your thoughts are on that upcoming, and if you have any other hints for me, what else you might be having down the line. <laughs> <laughs> this feels He's like obviously this, doing good this, business for you, isn't he? This, this feels <laughs> like a meeting we should have in my office. Um, uh, the Syndicate, by the way, is not one of ours. Uh, it's BBC One. But, um, uh, uh, well, Breathless is a, a drama launch this autumn, and uh, made by ITV Studios, written by Paul Unwin. Um, uh, a bit later in the autumn, so I hope that goes well for us, and I hope it goes well for you as well. And I'm glad that I'm glad that other things have been going well for you. Have you seen anything? Um, I, yes, of course I have, because you know it's uh, it's it's in the pipeline, like other you know like other dramas. So you know there's a there's a time of year, and this is that time of year when a lot of dramas film during the summer, and then you know they're coming up in the autumn, and they they, they sort of they, they I always think they come in a bit like when you. You know, commissioning dramas like sort of sending an army off to war and then they come back. Um, <laughs> um, so, yes, yes, yes. And we're very hopeful for Breathless. Absolutely. Is Coronation Street in trouble? Coronation Street, I think, 
uh, and I'm a bit wary of quoting statistics because Martha's got different ones. Um, <laughs> but I think it's 3% up year on year. Um, so just in those narrow terms, it's doing really, really well with the audience. Uh, both Coronation Street and Emmerdale are having exceptionally good years in 2013. It's telling fantastic stories. Um, uh, so the, the short and simple answer is no, I don't think it's in trouble at all. Okay, yep. Thank you. Um, of all the different new media that are out there at the moment, which of them do you think, if any of them, is the most serious threat to terrestrial television? Well, what, which sort of media do you mean? So YouTube, um, the split in audience, the way uh, viewers all, uh, look at television in different ways. Um, I'm particularly interested in whether you would see the youngsters that are making their own television in short bites for YouTube mm. and the other youngsters who are then watching them and perhaps drifting away from mainstream shows. Whether you see that as a threat or as an opportunity? I, I, I think it's a really, really complicated issue and a really interesting issue. And I don't want to sit here and say, I don't want to sound you know, as if, oh, we're not worried about that or not threatening anything. Because, of course, you, you know, television patterns are changing. But I think sort of currents flow in opposite directions. So the, the, the YouTube, ever since YouTube came along, I think we all got a bit seized by the idea that maybe young people would have atten the attention spans of gnats and we'd only want to watch, you know, clips of banana, you know, cats slipping on banana skins or whatever. But there's just as strong an argument, and Kevin Spacey made it, and I would totally endorse it, to say that attention spends are getting longer. We're demanding more depth from television, and we want, um, we want, uh, you know, we want to have an immersive experience from television um, that that is greater than we ever had. Over the summer, I don't know if I should say this. I did two different things to, for my summer break. I watched Game of Thrones because I'd heard it was brilliant, and I hadn't had time to. Um, and I read War and Peace, because I'd always meant to. Which was better? Well, <laughs> it's a very good question. <laughs> and I'm slightly wary now of, I don't want to read, <laughs> ITV Controller says Game of Thrones is better than War and Peace. That will not... That's obviously what you think, but though, what, I think. What I'm saying is, they both had quite similar qualities of immersing yourselves in fully imagined world, brilliantly done, epic themes... And I thought, that's fantastic that television... I certainly wasn't sitting there thinking, this is television, some lightweight nonsense, this is War and Peace, a great novel. They were both fantastic experiences. I don't, I don't think this is really answering your question at all, by the way. Um, <laughs> um, so I don't... I've never believed in this idea that we've only got the attention span of a gnat and that it's all going to get shorter. No, it's nonsense. But, of course, you know, young people... Uh, um, I mean... You know, remember, young people become middle-aged people and they become older people. Um, but we must watch very carefully how people make things, how they watch things. It will change our world. And, and, and it's absolutely right for us to watch that carefully. I, I, I never feel very worried about um, the fact that people between the ages of whatever, 18 and 24, don't watch so much television. They will start watching more television. We all, the statistics show, we watch more television sort of in every decade of our lives from our 20s kind of, you know, through to, 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 to when we die. You know, the, literally that's the case for reasons that are pretty obvious. You, you know, people in their 20s get out and about. Good luck to them. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> when what, you've got what, kids, you start watching a bit more television. <laughs> uh, what, one final question from Twitter, which is, if you, if you don't want to be judged by your ratings, what can we judge you by? Well, uh, I, I don't think you want to be judged by any one particular gauge. I think in this country we are slightly ratings junkies, um, and, I, and I think that's true not only of... I think it's true of all broadcasters. Um, and, and I, it, as I say, you can't possibly do the job that I'm doing and sit here and say ratings don't matter. Of course they do. We want to reach broad audiences. But ultimately, ratings don't matter to viewers. What matters to viewers is quality of programmes. So if we come up with great programmes, um, we will have a great commercial future. I'm absolutely sure that that's the case. I'm sure that Adam Crozier, as Chief Executive of ITV, would endorse that completely. Um, and I want ITV to be known by its creativity and its commitment to, 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 to brilliant programming, to working with great talent, great producers, and many of them in this room, 
who we love working with and, and great writers and on-screen talent. Well, Simple as that, us, ultimately. You've given us a lot of insight into your thinking about the past year, the year ahead. We're very grateful. I think we can all look forward to a, a Game of Thrones-style version of War and Peace as being the new <laughs> ITV drama. Thanks very much indeed to you all and to Peter Fitzgerald.